so there was a question that any suggestion about uh, any languages or tools that they need to learn for information management uh you can get uh, if you're going into data analysis you can data analysis or data science you can have a you know a, an overall understanding of say r python spark sql which most of the students do have i i believe uh, then if you are uh, yeah r python and spark are the main and sql are the main languages that you should be knowing you not should be knowing it's good to know in my case i did not know them i i started from scratch after coming here it worked for me so it might as well work for you as well it's there is no nothing as you need to know this before coming there is nothing as such okay and any comments on ms in the applied data science that the university has started this year so do you have any friends from that course yes i have a couple of friends uh, some were initially admitted for information management in the beginning but then they had 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 more interest in data science and were sure of doing data science only so they they shifted from information management to data science so to be specific uh, i don't really know much about it but i you can uh, ask me questions about information management in general but yes you can connect to those students doing uh, applied data science on uh, linkedin or facebook or you can just message me and i can connect you to my friends who are doing that that's great and what kind of questions can we expect for data analyst and data scientist usually they will go through your resume and what work have you done as a data analyst or as a data scientist or anything related to that first of all your resume will get picked up by the softwares and the algorithms which these companies use only if you have some work experience or some working knowledge or if you have done any projects in that field otherwise i i don't see any reason why your resume will get shortlisted uh, initially because they don't go through all the resumes manually and read all the resumes there is a software there is an application there is an algorithm that goes behind all those things and they shortlist candidates so there are not a fix, there is nothing Uh, fix that they will ask you about. It's it's mainly what's you, what you have written on your resume, and they might go into they might go deep into your project details and ask you to you know, maybe demonstrate what what you had done, and you might as well have to show them the application that you created or your recommendations or your findings and why did you how how did you go about doing that analysis. Okay, and there's one more question. Since Syracuse is a small city, do we have to move to other places for internships? As in, for applying or working in other cities? For applying, I would say. Working, I suppose. Yeah. Oh, okay. For applying, you don't really go to every office and talk to them whether they are any positions or opportunities. It's all online, so you can do that from your home itself. uh for working yes you have to go outside of syracuse most of the times 80 was 80 to 90% of the time you have to go outside which is good enough uh because you get to, you you get to explore some other place some other city or town which is a good experience if you want to be in syracuse for the rest of your life i don't think uh you should be targeting companies outside of syracuse. So, but yeah there are a lot of companies in syracuse or uh, not many which you are interested in i would say there are not many software companies not uh, many manufacturing type companies or health care companies but yeah, there are uh, many companies in syracuse and mostly you will have to move out of syracuse to do your internship or for the rest okay there is a qu- interesting question what are the city, uh, streets that are best to live Syracuse, and what is the average rent, or uh, depending on the street? Uh, how expensive a street can be, and how it, how cheap can it be? 
See, if you are staying on campus, you might as well have to pay $2,000 a month for a room. It can be that expensive as well. And if you are staying, say, 15, 20 minutes or maybe more far from the university, you have to pay as less as, say, three fifty dollars a month as well. It all depends upon the location, how much, how good that house is, what all is included. Uh, in my case, I stay on Westport, which is very popular amongst Asians and uh, a lot of American students do stay on that street. It's Syracuse University area and, and Syracuse University and the area around it is uh, mostly dominated by students and there are a few families which stay around. So Westport is a good place. Then, you can stay closer to the university as well, but then you have to pay a lot, lot of money for that. Then depends upon the apartment, the kind of apartment you have, whether it's a studio, it's a 3 bhk or 5 bhk There are a lot of variables involved and uh, there is no fixed amount. I mean, if you stay on this street, you have to pay this much. If you stay on this street, you have to pay this much, which is the case everywhere. And it is understood as Kolaba doesn't have the same same rent as Bangkok does, so it's as simple as that.